If you work in finance and accounting, you understand how tedious it is to reconcile financial records. Now, with Copilot for Finance, just released by Microsoft, reconciliation with Excel just gets so much easier and faster. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to reconcile financial records in few minutes rather than in hours or days. I will also show you how you can install Copilot for Finance onto your own Excel application so you can take advantage of that. Now, let's dive into it. In this Excel file, I have three worksheets, one for trip budget with the dates, expenditure category, and budget amount, and I have only 37 records. In my second sheet, I have the bank statement with bank transactions on the different dates for different amount, and I have the transaction category. Uh, here I have 43 records. Given the two table, I want to reconcile those transactions. For that, I will use the Copilot for Finance. I go to the Home tab. On the right side on my Excel application, I see Copilot for Finance, which is now in preview. I will click on Copilot for Finance. And on this task pane, it tells us we can reconcile data to compare the financial records. Copilot for Finance can do much, much more. But for now, in the preview, this is the only thing we can do. Before we proceed, you have to make sure your data are in a table. Like this range of data is in a table. When I click my cursor inside, it has a table design tab, and this table being named as bank statement. When I go to the other sheet, this is also a table. I go to table design tab, this being named as trip budget. Now, if your data is not in a table, like in this worksheet called range, here, those data are not in a table, you can Leave your cursor in the range, go to the Insert tab, click on Table, and this range from A1 to F44, that's right range, I will accept that. Also, my table does have header in the first row, so this being checked, that's fine, and then click OK. Now, that makes this into a table. I go back to my Copilot for Finance, I will reconcile data. Now, we need to select two worksheets and tables to reconcile. First worksheet is a trip budget. So you can choose which worksheet you want to use. And within the worksheet, you may have multiple tables. In this case, we have only one, which is called trip budget. And second worksheet, we can use the bank statement. You can choose which worksheet you want to use. And within this worksheet, we have only one table, which is called bank statement. And then we continue to next. In the second step, you have to select at least two columns, one of each type. For each table. If I click on add column, you see we need to select at least two columns, one for mapping keys, one for monetary column. The mapping key is a column used for finding match records. And this may not be only one, it could be multiple. So in our case, it won't be one because between the two tables, there's not any one single field will identify the record. In our case, in the trip budget, we have to use the date and the budget amount those two fields to match the data from the bank statement, also using the transaction date and the transaction category. So those are two fields we want to use. I go back to the add column, choose mapping key, and from the trip budget, the column will be date. From the bank statement, the column will be transaction date. Now we need to add one more column for matching, which will be the category. So I click on Add Column, Mapping Keys. So in the B, the column for the two budget will be Expenditure Category for the bank statement. The second column will be Transaction Category. And then I need to add the Monetary Column. So go to Add Column, Monetary Column. From the two budget, that will be the Budget Amount. From the bank statement, that will be the Amount. So now we have defined those column for mapping keys and the column for the amount. Then I will click on next. And now in less than three seconds, it finished the reconciliation, give us a report. On the left side, we have the records from the trip budget. On the right side, we have the records from the bank statement. And in column I, we have the difference between the two 
tables. And we have here three different type of records, which are unmatched transactions and potentially matched transactions and matched transactions. Now let me expand to see the detail. Here you see we have level one and two. Copy for finance had done the grouping, help us to see the higher level or lower level. If I click on level one, that will give me just a very high level. When I click on level two, that allow me to see the detail. So let's start from the match transactions. February 19 for flights, from the trip budget we have $700. Then from the bank statement, we also have for February 19 for flights with $700. So they're matching perfectly and the difference is zero. So all the records over here that matching, the difference will be zero. Now for the second group are those potentially matched transactions. Here we have four. On uh, February 19, for the food from trip budget, we have $120. From the bank statement, for February 19, food, we we'll also have $120. So actually, the difference is zero. So that actually the matching, perfectly fine. If you look at second record, February 19, transportation, $150. Now from the bank statement, February 19, transportation, also $150. The difference is zero. So it looks like those are actually matching perfectly fine. Why this being classified as potentially match transaction rather than being match transaction? So this is a difference. For those are considered as match transactions, those are one-to-one -one matching, meaning this is a one single record from the true budget. It matches with all other single record in the bank statement, which is the record over here. It's one-to-one -one matching will be considered as matched. Now for those under the potentially matched transactions, those are not one-to-one -one matching. Those could be one-to-many matching, or many-to-one matching, or many-to-many -many matching. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. If you look at the first record over here, from the trip budget, on February 19, food is $120. Now, if I go to trip budget, to look at February 19 for food, which is record over here, which is $120. And this is a one single record over here. Now, if you go to the bank statement, look at February 19 for food, which are those two records. You see, here we have two records for February 19 for food. The total amount is $120. But here we have two records versus in the trip budget, it's one single record. So this is one to many matching. So that's why this is being under potentially match transactions rather than being match transaction. Because for match transactions, those are one to one. For anything that's under potentially match transaction, those are one to many or many to one, or could be many to many. So it could be here, we have two records, here we have three records, but the total amount are matching the still for the same date for the same category. And then we have above over here are unmatched transactions. Like for February 19 for entertainment, we have $160. But for the bank statement on February 19 for entertainment, we have only $30. So we have difference of $130. Now, if you look at the second one for February 19 for miscellaneous in the trip budget, we have only $10. But for the bank statement, on February 19, for miscellaneous, we have 140. You see, here we have a difference of negative 130. This miscellaneous in the bank statement, this $140, could be actually for entertainment. It's just somehow it's not being classified as entertainment because the two together is $170. And over here, the two together is also $170. This is something for us to review and decide if they are matching or not. This is how the code pipe for finance produces reconciliation within Excel, but it can also produce a report for us. Here being in the preview, it couldn't produce that report for us, but now I could copy this reconciliation report within Excel and use the ChatGPT data analyst to produce a Word document. Now, let me copy this entire reconciliation report. Can't you see to copy? And let me go to the Chat GPT. And I'm using the data analyst because data analyst is able to use the Python code to process data and generate report in Word document. 
So I will go to this prompt bar, Ctrl V to paste. One paste over here actually will paste two things. One is the picture of that range I copied, or the other will be actually those number and the text. I don't want to have those text, so I can remove all of those, but only keep the picture over here. Now my prompt will be, please create a detailed summary in Word document based on the attached reconciliation report. Thanks. So this is the picture I have pasting over here. Now the analyst is performing the analysis and producing a report for me. So chat GPT data analyst took a little bit of time to use the picture I have copied paste over here. It has done the analysis, it created detailed summary and generated a Word document for me to download. And now I can open this document. So it provides this reconciliation report summary to tell us about the 20 unmatched transactions and the four potential matched transactions and the 13 matched transactions and what are the difference. And also from the grand total perspective, what's the difference? If you would like to download CodePy for Finance onto your own X application, you need to come to this particular Microsoft webpage. And I have provided this link in the description below. This is free. You'll click on Get It Now. Then it's going to prompt you to sign in to Microsoft App Source. It's just you need to use your work or school account. But if you do use your Microsoft account, that's still fine. That's what I did. And you sign in, and then you need to provide your name and country, and then click on Get It Now. Then you will become to this web page. You just click on Open in Excel. Then you will have the Copy for Finance appear in your Excel application in the Home tab on the right side. Now, one thing you need to know when you perform reconciliation with Copy for Finance with Excel, your data cannot have more than 10,000 rows and 30 columns. Okay, that's Copilot for Finance with Excel. I hope you have learned something new. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. I will keep updating you about the new capability with Excel and how Copilot will help you to become more productive within Excel. Thank you.